Hey, how you doing? We are going to make this. When I saw this on the Mapbox blog, I had two immediate thoughts. Thought number one, this has no utility whatsoever. Thought number two, I have to make this because it looks awesome. And that's enough for me. Uh, what you're looking at is the technical term is a hypsometric area. Just think of it as a contour polygon instead of a contour line. And since Mapbox GLJS, you can extrude contours with a Z value. You can pump these things up in the air and you get this cool kind of tiered elevation effect. So we're gonna build that with our own data. Uh, we're going to start with the DM and it's, it's a three-step process. We're gonna turn our DM into polygons and then we're going to turn our polygons into vector tiles and then we're going to style it. Is that three? Yeah, I think that's three. There's some steps in between there we're going to do to clean up the data, but that's essentially it. We're going to use all open source tools. So let's get started. First, pull up QGIS, because what else would you pull up? Nothing. QGIS is awesome. This is Mecklenburg County's uh, digital elevation model for 2017. It's about five gigabytes LZW compressed. And you can see Mecklenburg is pretty flat. It'll trick you. It'll have a minimum elevation of 226, that's in feet, and a maximum of 884. And you think to yourself, you got a good little hill going there. No, we don't have hills, we have holes. I don't know what they're looking for down there. Talc, gypsum, bodies, they just dug holes. So that is most of our relief. If you look, the median elevation or mean is 694. So you're really talking maybe 600 to 884 feet across the county. So this isn't going to look super pretty for us. Hopefully you've got some hills where you are. This is the digital elevation model that I have locally at, with that we made from LiDAR ourselves. There are other places you can download DMs for an area you're interested in. I'll put some links to where you can download DMs in the show notes if you don't have one handy for the area you're interested in. Once we have a DEM, we're going to want to cut down the number of values in it because if when we turn the raster into polygons, if every pixel is a slightly different value, every pixel becomes a polygon, you end up with a gigantic probably a segmentation fault, but if not a gigantic mess. So we're going to take the DM and we're going to use some grass. That's right, we're going to use grass. Hey, Helena, you're not watching this, but you're awesome. All right, Helena asked me at a, you've never met Helena. She's the nicest person in the world. She asked me at a conference, I noticed you never use grass. And I was like, I don't use grass because grass is for smart people and I am a pants on head moron. But now I'm using grass, and it's not that I've gotten any smarter. Grass is just so much easier to use these days. So we're going to use a grass module in QGIS, or through QGIS, called uh, it's R dot recode. So we can pick our elevation, our, our digital elevation model. We are going to make for a recode, you need recode rules, and it can be in a variety of different ways, but we're going to do like a low value to a higher value and what we want to recode that as. And it's going to read that from a file. To make that file, I just wrote a little bit of Python. Make this bigger for you. Where I've got the min elevation, max elevation, the interval I want, it's going to open a text file, and it's going to write whatever the minimum's at, and then the minimum plus 10, and then it's gonna reassign that to what that minimum was converted to meters. That's the uh, times 0 0.3048, because it's in feet right now, and Mapbox, GL, JS, everything's in meters. So it's converting that to meters, because base 10 systems, they make more sense anyway. And then we're gonna, this is just a little loop, and it makes a text file like this where it's just the begin value, end value, and what I want to assign that to in meters. So we're going to pick that text file where our rules are and save it to 
uh, show the advanced parameters here. We're going to add a LZW compression to the output raster. That'll make it much smaller. And you're going to save it to a file and you'll just pick a TIFF where you want to put it and hit run. I'm not going to be running these commands live. I've already run them before because some of them can take many hours. This one through uh, the recode through grass for Mecklenburg County only took like 5-10 minutes maybe. On my Ryzen 6 core 12 thread 32 gigabyte of RAM beast, your mileage may vary. So you run that, you will get a recoded DEM. And it can be hard to see the difference. You might not be able to see it on your screen. See if we can find an area where there's a lot of stuff going on in a hurry like that. That's the original. You notice it's a lot blurrier with different values. And this is the recoded and you have much more discrete lines you can see. And that is making it, it's one of the steps we're going to do to make our output of our polygons much nicer, much cleaner. Now once we've recoded, we also want to clean up areas where there might just be a couple pixels with a particular value together. We're going to use a majority filter in Saga to do that. Now you might have that available to you straight from QGIS. My Saga on my Linux machine here is there's something QGIS doesn't like about it so it doesn't show it there. So we're just I just pulled up Saga as its own tool. So if you've installed QGIS you probably have. And I just loaded that TIFF by double clicking on it from the file system. You notice it's here in my data now. So now I can go to a tool in Saga called Majority Filter. So I'm going to go down to Imagery, no, Grid, Filter, and Majority Minority Filter. I'm going to pick my grid system, my uh, my grid. I'm not going to set a filter grid. Type majority threshold zero. Type circle. I'm going to set the kernel radius. My pixels are three foot pixels, so I'm going to set it to ten. That seems to work for what I need. Then hit execute, and this is going to be the longest thing you're going to have to run. This for me ran like many many hours. So once you got it set, you hit execute, and it's just going to do its thing. You get a little progress bar here in the bottom of this window. And when it's done, you will have a, a majority filtered raster. So when it sees a little tiny glob of stuff, what it'll do is it'll assign that the value of the biggest thing that it's touching. So it's kind of like a dissolve for rasters, sort of. So once that's made, you'll notice in your data, you'll have another entry here under that grid. And then from your tools, you can go to import export Google and export export geotiff and you can just pick uh, your data set and the grid and then where you want to put it as tiff and in their creation properties we're going to go compress equals lzw again that's a really good compression for this kind of thing and out it will Put out it will put the output will be this majority filter and you can see the difference right away from hopefully uh, maximize your YouTube window and squint like this is the recoded values which is already better than the base the majority filter really cleans that up into what you can kind of see where the contour lines are going to go so that is our majority filter, and that's the longest thing you're going to run. Start that running and go have coffee in an adjacent state. Come back, that'll be done. Now we're ready to convert the uh, recoded and majority filtered raster to vector. And for that, we're going to use another grass module called vr.2.vect. Because naming things is hard. What can I tell you? So we'll pick our raster and get that one you made the majority filter from and export it out of Saga. Feature type area. I just gave it 
a field name of Elev. Why not? Now check this smooth corners of area features. What that'll do, if you just convert a raster to polygons, like if you do Google polygonize, it'll kind of look like uh, like pixel art because it's going, you'll see a little jag around every single uh, raster cell. By, we're smoothing some of that out so we'll get some nice looking vectors at the end and we won't have to go through another smoothing step on the output features. So we've got that checked. We don't need any of the advanced features here. We're just going to save it out to a shape file. I tried saving it to a geo package from Grass in QGIS and it just made a shape file anyway. So just save it out to a shape file. And that gives me about a one gigabyte shape file. It looks like so. Now, if you're super crazy about line smoothness, you could go through and run a smooth algorithm on these. I'm not super crazy about that. So I just took that as it was. So we've got a vector shape file. You can right click on that and go save as, make it a GeoJSON file and change it to WGS84, give it a file output. I set the coordinate precision down to 10 because that makes the GeoJSON as a text file that makes the output a lot smaller. And hit go and it'll make a GeoJSON file in WGS84 of our polygons. Huh, following all this so far? I'll, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have a link in the show notes to my blog where I'm posting uh, some code and notes about the steps I'm taking. So we've got a GeoJSON file. The next thing we need to do is run Tippy Canoe. This is the only time we need to go to the command line. Uh, Tippy Canoe is uh, Mapbox's uh, GeoJSON to vector tile conversion tool. It's very fast, but it's a compiled C program. So if you're not for the faint of heart, I would advise you get a Docker image of Tippy Canoe. I advise you get Docker because it's awesome. And then I advise you to get a, a Docker image for Tippy Canoe and run it that way. The Tippy Canoe command I ran, I'll post in the show notes, but it's fairly straightforward. I just gave it uh, an output MB tiles file and an input GeoJSON file. I kept the elevation uh, field and I did a dash capital P for you know multi processing. And that takes not a whole lot of time. It ends up with a 32 megabyte MB tiles file with our contours. So now we have a contours MB tiles file and Let's take a look at that. Did I change something here? I didn't mean to. Let's launch this with a live server, which is uh, an extension for uh, Visual Studio Code. That's very cool. We've got here, it's kind of hard to see zoomed out, We've got our hypsometric areas. And again, Mecklenburg County is extraordinarily boring. Oh, when I recoded, I did it in 10 feet contours. Depending on how hilly you are, you might want to go more or less than that to control the density of your hypsometric lines. We can tilt this to the side of it. Very cool. What that looks like in your GLJS or your style file, I just have a simple HTML file here and I'm setting a source. I'm serving the vector tiles off my own little vector tile server. And that's, that's a project I'll, I'll link to in the show notes. And what I'm doing there is I'm doing a fill extrusion for that layer. And I'm setting the property as elev and the stops and the colors here and the fill extrusion height. And that's it. That's what we're, that's how we're making this. Now, if I were to do this for production, I'd change these colors a little bit because it, it tilted this vertice color scale down toward most of the variability being in this hole 
So I would I would I would make these a little bit nicer. But the other thing I saw, and I saw this on YouTube, not YouTube, uh, Twitter. Uh, let's see if I can. I need to credit that person. It was their idea. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this. Yi Zhu uh, made this cool little animation of in Mapbox Studio filling up a the it's hypsometric areas, which is contour polygons. I like that phrase better. Um, so he had that idea, and I thought that was really cool. So what I did is I added a GeoJSON. Uh, let me see if I can find up one of my pits. Here we go. I added a GeoJSON file that is just the the outline of the county, just the county boundary, and I gave it a a set height, and that's this blue value here, and I'm drawing it after the contours. Now what you can do with that that's really cool is I have this slider set to adjust the height so you can watch as the water as that co that county boundary that has a height starts going higher and higher it's getting higher and higher in our hypsometric areas and you can see it start flooding out places that's pretty cool I think maybe cool I'm going cool what that looks like is it's just pointing our source here is just this GeoJSON file I made from the county boundary and I'm giving it a a base height of 80 which puts it down in the bottom of one of my pits we, we have pits I don't know why we have, we, we have pits now I just have the slider where I've set the on input do uh, send the value to the set flood height function and the set flood height function just takes the paint property of flood the fill extrusion height and it sets it to the value of that slider so that's how that works ah nah so that's how to build those hypsometric areas and put them in your mapbox gljs maps with your own data I will be posting lots of notes on the blog post with code snippets of the code I'm running and all that happy stuff. And I don't know that we will actually use this for anything <laughs> because it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's really cool, but I don't know what I would do with it. Maybe I'll show it to some, some of the folks in my office and see if they have any idea what we would do <laughs> so again uh that was my first thought when i saw it. this is this doesn't have much utility especially if your area is flat as a pancake but it's still pretty cool so i sat down and had to make it and that's how i did it and you can do it too i'll catch you later bye bye